Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Last year, the city passed the Safe Ride Ordinance, which regulates rideshare companies. This ordinance includes a provision that after one year it would be reviewed, so we would like your feedback, especially if you have used a rideshare service during the past year. Visit our virtual town hall at kcmomentum.org to read about and comment on these suggested changes. After a one-month public comment period, staff will review the resident input and then a revised ordinance will go to the City Council later this year and that will include a chance for additional public hearings. The weather outside may be frightful, just not the kind that we normally think about during the winter holidays, but it's time to think ahead. Each year, the Mayor's Christmas Tree Fund is a source of hope and help for hundreds of Kansas City children. Hi, I'm Mayor Sly James. Kansas City has a rich tradition of helping our friends and neighbors in need. We have a variety of social service organizations whose mission is rooted in easing the hardships that our less fortunate neighbors face. One such organization is the Mayor's Christmas Tree Fund. The Mayor's Christmas Tree Fund has been around since the 19th century when Mayor George Shelley bought a Christmas tree and prepared meals for the poor with his own money. Since then, the Mayor's Christmas Tree Fund has become a staple holiday tradition and serves as a symbol of generosity that directly reflects the heart of all Kansas Cityans. Every year the fund seeks to make the holiday season more enjoyable for senior citizens, people with disabilities, and children from every corner of our city through monetary assistance and holiday gifts. Last year alone we helped over 4,000 individuals and a number of nonprofits. This help is often the difference between a joyous holiday season full of memories and laughter and one stricken by hardship and turmoil. This year, the Mayor's Christmas Tree Fund is working to expand our giving to more Kansas Cityans and nonprofits, which is why we need your help. We need it now more than ever. You can go to kcmayor.org slash Christmas Tree, or thanks to our friends at Avid Mobile, you can text the word CHRISTMAS, all caps, to 72727 and give through your mobile device. Let's make this year the biggest year for the Mayor's Christmas Tree Fund ever. And oh, don't forget to join me this year at the tree lighting ceremony at Crown Center the day after Thanksgiving. Thanks for your support. Air quality is most at risk during summer months when heat, sunlight, and vehicle emissions combine in our atmosphere to create a harmful ozone layer. Our daily activities cause more than half of all emissions that lead to ozone pollution. Simple steps such as carpooling, riding the bus, walking, and biking can make a big difference in our region's air quality. Some of the things that we do at for us air quality is we, we just advocate. We, we educate the public on the do's and don'ts uh, during these ozone alert days. Uh, we're, as you know, we have a lot of those in the summer months. So what we do is we just talk to them about like carpooling, making sure to use public transportation, um, also not to top off their gas when they're at the fuel, um, the fuel tanks. Make sure they just stop when it clicks. Uh, reduce lawn mowing, you know, things of that nature that may put more pollutants into the atmosphere that will add, will add to the uh, o- ground level ozone. Each year, city employees, along with other local companies, compete in the Green Commute Challenge. It's a fun way to encourage alternate forms of transportation. So far this summer, city employees have logged more than 4,000 trips for 37,000 miles and saved more than 25,000 pounds of greenhouse gases, which cause ozone. Next, information from other city departments, including some health tips so you can stay safe during this long, hot summer. The heat is back on in Kansas City, and we need you to follow these few simple tips to keep safe this summer. Don't use fans as your primary source of cooling. Use cool towels, cool showers, and make sure that you do get into some air conditioning at least a few hours a day. Never leave your kids or pets in a car because the temperature can heat up really quickly. Make sure you check on your neighbors, friends, and relatives to make sure they're keeping cool this summer. 
Medications can affect one's ability to regulate their heat. Make sure you talk to your doctor to make sure what's best for you to keep cool this summer. If you have to work outside, make sure you take frequent breaks in the shade and drink plenty of water. You may hear about a heat advisory. That means you need to take steps to keep cool. Our community centers are open for you to get some relief from the heat. For more videos, go to our website at kcmo.gov slash FYIKC. Hi, I'm Officer Meyer with Kansas City Animal Control, and these are my dogs, General and Coda Bear. Coda's 10. I got him from a friend of a friend who could no longer care for him, and General I, I got from a shelter two years ago. My favorite part of the job is helping people become more educated about animals so that pets can be safer, people can be safer, and everybody has a happier life along the way. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Summer is in full swing, so be sure to take advantage of these fun activities at your Casey Parks facilities. July is Park and Recreation Month. Casey Parks is celebrating the month by joining with the National Recreation and Park Association for a Super Parks Selfie Photo Contest. Weekly themes are posted for you to take a selfie in your local park or recreation area based on the theme and post it on social media with the hashtags SuperJuly and SuperParkSelfie. Visit nrpa.org slash July for rules and details. This summer, Casey Parks has partnered with Exhale LLC to provide weekly Tai Chi classes in Swope, Luce, and Tower Parks. Tai Chi is a gentle exercise that is suitable for people of all ages, abilities, and levels of physical fitness. Benefits include improved muscle strength, flexibility, balance, and stress reduction. A per-class drop-in fee is $10 or $60 for an eight-week session fee. Visit eventrite.com for the complete schedule and to register. Save the date for the Ethnic Enrichment Festival, August 19th through 21st in Swope Park. This 37th annual event features food, culture, music, and more from 60 plus countries. Admission is $3 for adults. Kids 12 and under are free. Visit eeckc.net for details. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org and click on the calendar or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Before you put your pet in your car, ask yourself if you really need to take your pet with you. And if the answer is no, leave your pet safely at home. The Kansas City, Missouri Police Department canine unit carries their dog in patrol cars everywhere they go. And besides the tinted windows, they've got ways to keep them cool. But most people don't have tinted windows and often leave their dogs in vehicles while they shop or run errands. Doing so even for a few minutes in hot weather can make your pet seriously ill or worse. KCPD wants to remind you never to keep your pet in the car during hot weather. Officer David Ferber explains how he keeps Roscoe ready for action. A lot of people don't know that uh, we have a system in our car, we call it the hot dog system, and that measures the temperature inside of our car, and if it happens to get above um, let's say 90 degrees, if I set my car at 90 degrees, um, the lights and sirens immediately kick on on my car and the windows roll down to let us know that it's too hot uh, for our uh, dogs to be inside of the vehicle. Temperatures can reach more than 100 degrees in a car in the heat of the day within 30 minutes and that's no place for a dog. Cracking the window makes no difference. Keeping your dog in the shade with water is the best way to keep them cool or you can 
fill up a kiddie pool with water and let them play. If you come across an unattended pet, here's how to tell the animal is in distress. You can normally tell, I mean, just the dog is really uh, very lethargic, um, disorientated, um, breathing is very slow, uh, ears are slicked back, tail is between the leg, and um, that is just a real sign that something is just is stressing your dog. A new law allows KCPD to forcibly enter your vehicle if they determine an animal is in danger, and it has happened. We actually had an incident where um, we had some Royals fans decide that it was a good idea to leave a six-week-old puppy inside of a vehicle with the uh, windows just slightly cracked. And I believe the temperature was in, it was over 90 degrees that day. And we uh, realized that the puppy was in distress and it was, uh, it was an emergency situation where we actually had to bust the window and remove the uh, puppy from the vehicle. Officer Ferber also advises that you not carry pets in your lap or allow them to ride in the front seat when you are driving. Unrestrained pets can be distracting and they can be seriously injured or killed. Um, we have a kennel that's in the back and it has a uh, it has an opening, a cage, a sliding cage that locks and we never allow our dogs to ride in the front seat with us because they, that would cause us a distraction. Um, that would cause us to be concerned more about our dog than what's uh, out on the road, which we need to be, that's our number one priority, is the public safety and traffic that's around us. So the way to, only way to eliminate that is to keep your dogs in the back seat of your vehicle. Just as you should always wear your seat belt to protect you in case of an accident, your pet should always be properly restrained while in your car. I'm Officer Rick Cartwright, have a safe week. Fringe Festival KC is back for its 12th year. It happens throughout Kansas City at multiple venues and is a Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supported event. The 11-day Visual Art and Performing Arts Festival is happening later this month and to tell us all about it is the executive producer and founder of Fringe Festival, Cheryl Kimmy. Cheryl, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us about the festival. Well, thank you, Consuelo, for providing this opportunity. How did Fringe Festival get started? Oh goodness, that's a complicated story and I'll try to narrow it down quickly. I am a fan of the arts, not an artist, and I saw all of our young artists leaving town because there weren't opportunities to produce here. So friends said, we need a Fringe Festival. I went to the Arts Council and they helped me get it off the ground. We started with a three-day event in 2005 and now 12 years later, we're an 11 day event. There's music and dance and theater and film, spoken word, comedy, drama, you name it, you can find it on the French. And how many people do you expect to have this year? Last year, our attendance was over 20,000. Uh, we're expecting attendance to exceed 25,000 this year. And those are unique visitors? Or? Those are not unique visitors because some people are what we call our fringe fanatics and they go to multiple shows. Uh, unique visitors were probably over 8,000 last year. So we're, we're shooting for 10,000 unique visitors this year. With so much happening, um, throughout the city. How are you How are you undertaking this? Could you use volunteers? Oh, you... always need volunteers. Uh, with the 475 productions, it takes two to three volunteers per production. Okay. So we need in excess of 3,000 volunteer uh, uh, bodies on helping us. And how can people sign up and what are some of the ben benefits of being a volunteer? So volunteers, you can go to the website, www.kcfringe.org, and in the menu, you can click on volunteer and follow the directions. And we have, we train all, all of our volunteers, volunteers usher and house manage. Uh, we also have um, folks that sell tickets at the doors. Then volunteers get to see shows for free. We pay them with fringe bucks and they use those fringe bucks then to get tickets to shows. Well, and the festival also is such a great bridge for not just the visual and the performing arts, but also from for different generations because this is not just an adult festival. This no. is for youth as well. It's equally divided. About a third is for all ages. Their family fair. We have clowns and jugglers and and magic shows um, and puppet shows, and then we have uh, equal amount of parental guidance shows and then also R-rated shows. Check all of those ratings because 
titles may be deceiving. So you have free events that are for all generations. Yes. And then you also have ticketed events. How can we go about buying tickets? So the first step is to get your fringe button. Everyone has a fringe button. They're $5, it's a one-time purchase and you want to have it with you for all fringe events. Now kids buttons, 12 and under, we provide those free. We have a special youth button for them. We want to make this affordable for families. Um, little ones, um, t show tickets are $10 for adults. For children six to 12, they're $5 and five and under are all free. We have back-to-back -back shows. This is confusing for people who've never been before. We run, a, most shows are 60 minutes long. We have a 60 minute show. We move that audience out, move, set up the next show, move the next audience in, in half an hour's time, and start the next show. So it's back to back shows. So a venue will have anywhere from three to six performances in an evening. And to find out about all schedule information, ticket information, and if you want to sign up to be a volunteer, they can just go to your website? Yes, caseyfringe.org. You can buy tickets online. There is a PDF of the program if you want to see that. You can sort by, by genre. You can sort by, um, by ratings, by show ratings. You could figure out just about whatever you want so from the website. Very accessible and interactive. Yes, very. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much for having us here at your home base. And um, we look forward to, to seeing what's happening at Fringe, and we look forward to seeing all of Kansas City Converge and participate. Thank you so much for having us, and congratulations on your 12 years. Thank you. Come enjoy. It's a ma an amazing event. If you happen to be downtown, riding the streetcar, or just hanging out, and you want to find out information about events that are happening throughout the city, including events that are supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund, you can go to the KC City Post kiosks that are located along the streetcar route or throughout Kansas City. You can find out about events such as Fringe Fest that is happening on July 21st through the 31st and other events that are supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund and that are happening locally. So come by the kiosk and check things out. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf. You can make a difference in your own neighborhood. Attend a meeting of the Public Improvement Advisory Committee or submit a request for infrastructure improvements. PIAC hearings allow residents to provide input on the upcoming capital budget. The last day to submit a PIAC request is August 31st. Forms can be found at kcmo.gov and search PIAC, P-I-A-C. So PIAC, or the Public Improvements Advisory Committee, is a committee that goes through the one cent for infrastructure uh, tax that we have in Kansas City and looks at various projects around the city and helps decide and recommend what sorts of projects that we do. So for example, if you have a sidewalk project like we had along Parvin Road, or if you have a road project like we've had at North Jackson, if you have park improvements like we've had at Hidden Valley Park, or any number of parks, any number of sidewalks, 
walks, any number of streets. It is the public's opportunity to ask for those sorts of improvements and they petition our PIAC committee to uh, ask those improvements, talk about uh, what makes them uh, good ideas for the city to do, and those recommendations then come from the committee to the city council to ultimately fund. Uh, we have within that tax about $80 million a year to help fund projects all over the city. And so uh, whether it is uh, something that's in your neighborhood or something that's down the street, it's your opportunity to engage with the city and hopefully see an improvement done in your neighborhood. There are three district hearings left and these will be followed by citywide public hearings. So take a look at the schedule. Buying fresh local produce is always a nice way to spend a Saturday morning at the City Market. And now, you have a chance to stock up during the week. The City Market has launched the Wednesday Evening Market each week from 4 to 7 p.m. through September. The Wednesday Evening Market features a limited selection of specialty farmers, local makers, artists, and cooking demonstrations, all set to live music in a relaxed, open-air atmosphere. Several shops and restaurants are also open during these Wednesday Evening Markets. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and all of our great programs that you can view on demand. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Stay cool and have a great week.